Okay, so. Anybody want to take a crack at this first one? Yes. yes. X string to play note D3 on MIDI channel 3 at full velocity. Yeah. Can you explain it when you get it? This is probably going to Nine. Nine, yes, that's note on. Note on. Two. Two for MIDI channel 3, very good. Yeah. Uh, Can we put colons? Okay, so this is where I got confused. Okay, well, let's skip the second byte. Let's, okay, go, let's go to the third byte. 7F, it's full 7F velocity. is the third byte, right? Because that's full velocity. Right. So now we just need the note number. Oh, okay. it's not F7? So, uh, E3. I put 6-2. I put 36. I mean, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking three, about? 3E. For what? For the note? That's it. Three, okay, how did you get that? Because I, I... Okay, so... Uh, Let's see. Are you sure? Is it that close at all? I, I thought. Well, well, okay. So first, what is the number that we're trying to find E three associated with? Well, well, I don't know, but the only number we know is middle C, right? Yes. So, so what number is middle C? Sixty. Exactly. So, so D three is sixty two, right? Right. And then okay, we need to convert sixty two to hex. Okay, so here is middle C, C3, right? right? Wait a second. Middle C is the third C on the keyboard. Okay. Assuming that the first C oh, is zero, okay. right? Okay. So that's note number 60, right? Uh -huh. And when I say D3, I mean the D, the third D, which is the, the D that's after middle C, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's 60, the next note would be this black key. That would be 61. And the note after that would be 62. Uh -huh. So what's 62 in hex? Uh, uh, Are you ready for the shortcut? Yeah, I'd love to see the shortcut. Did any of you buy pcalc when I told you to buy pcalc last year? I have yes. to reinstall it, but yes. All right, so 62. You see these numbers up here? Decimal, hex, octave, binary. Yeah. Oh, shut up. You're just going to press hex. Hex. 3E. Dogs. I figured out my head. That exists in the real world. That exists. Oh, my gosh. It's called a programmer's calculator. Does this not have hex? No. Can you go to any store and get that? You can get a programmer's calculator if you handle one that does that kind of stuff. Awesome. Yes, so now the binary version of this. I, I know the first part and the last part, but I didn't know. Remember, we just part. split this up into nibbles. So what's 9 in binary? 1. Be an 8, 0, 0, 1, right? Yeah. And then the 2 would be 0, 0, 1, 0. Right, there's your first byte. Right. Okay, what would be the 3? Um, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1. And then the E would be. One, zero, one, one, one. Uh, and then it's zero. No, 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 no that's right. No, you, so it would one, be. Zero, one. Yes. Oops. Because F would be all ones. Mm -hmm. Right. So it well, would be one, 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 zero. <laughs> yeah. Right? It would so be E. It's, okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah I'm one and then 7F zero. would be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. I got the first part and the last part right, and the middle part of it. I confused myself. I like did some so weird meta logic where I made like actual <laughs> little C C four and then converted that with C three. No, 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 no. It was so silly. Far more complicated, more complicated than it actually is. <gasps> yeah, we all okay, so we all just to like <laughs> make this one hundred percent clear to my brain. Um as this class goes, we are always going to refer to little c as 3c. Yes. Or as c3, yes. rather. Okay. Yes. And it's always going to be 60? Yes. Yes. Okay. Alright. Uh, next one. Program change to program number 6 on MIDI channel 5. Anybody want to guess on, take a guess on this one? C406. Yeah, C406. Very good. Bam. Yeah. You got it. You got that one. Yeah. Binary version of this? One, one. Zero, 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 one, zero. So the C would be one, one, zero, zero. zero, zero yeah. Right? Yeah. And then it's 
0100. And then the floor zero, one, part zero. would be 0100, zero, zero, right? Right. And then the 0000 zero, zero, zero for zero. that. And then 6 would be 0, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. Wow. Okay, hex string to pan MIDI channel 10 all the way to the left. B. Yep, B would be for program or control change, right? Nine. A. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Oh, that's right. right. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Good. Then it's zero A. Zero A. Zero A. Zero A. Yeah, zero A would be pan, because since pan is controller 10, right? Right. What? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. I'll what? Sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> OK. Wait. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Hex string that will turn up the volume all the way up for MIDI channel 6 and 7. Okay. No. Great card in It's fine. This is 6. Yep. Uh, B5. Okay, B5, so that's control change on MIDI channel 6. And then. Uh, Seven. Yep, zero seven for volume. Seven F. Seven F for full volume, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Six. And the yep. same thing. Same thing again. This time with B six, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. B six zero seven so long. So I just screwed up the nine. There you B. go. Wait, why do we know that for number five? Why do we know that pan control is zero? Um, it's in the list. Okay. So if you look at the cheat sheet, I took some screenshots the top sheet, like the top secret cheat sheet. Where, uh, where is where this is cheat sheet? It? I showed it to you right at the end of class. Where? Oh, I just took screenshots of the. Of the, the it's in the book video. too. If you okay. if you went over to the little book okay. thing. I did go to the little book. Um, oh, I thought so, the cheat sheet was just for the game. No, it's oh, for like the whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Corey. It's in a flash. Okay, I remember now. Great. Open launch key documentation. Here's the whole thing, the whole MIDI spec okay, I have in three pages. <laughs> like, okay. like oh. we, we worked hard to like cl collapse this whole thing into three pages for you. Yeah, I didn't know that that was, we did, I didn't know that that was for. I didn't know it was like real well, we're actually, Look, controller number 10, pan. Great. Um, I have another question. Good to know. It's like, um, I give you these things. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but number five doesn't specify a note. So does that mean that you just don't play? Number what? Number five. Doesn't specify what? It doesn't specify a note. So well, it's not a note message. Know. It's a channel message. We're panning a channel. Okay. I'm saying pan MIDI no channel 10. Oh, right. Okay. Great. Pan is a control change, not a note. Right? Okay. Exactly. Okay, so let's go to seven now. So seven, what is the hex string that will play note C3 at full velocity on MIDI channel one and release note C3 on MIDI channel two at the same time? Nine. Zero. Three. C. It's C? Yeah. Why C3 is three. C3. Oh, yeah, that's C. just a stupid. Yeah, Remember, that's the stupid computer science oh. guy. Hey, look, C3 is 3C backwards, and that's yeah. 60, <laughs> which is hex for 3C. Seven. So there's 7F. 7F, right? Yeah, 8, 1. Yeah, so now, we need, now there's a couple way, ways to do this one. Uh, note off, you could do a full note off, which would be, which would be yeah, 8, 1. So note off, maybe channel 2. Uh, that would be C3. Sorry, 3C. 3C. 7F. 7F. Remember, it can't be C3 because that would be a status byte. Yeah. Right? Okay, the other way to do this one is you could do 913C00 if you wanted, and that would technically be correct as well. Okay. And generally speaking, note off velocity is ignored <laughs> by most MIDI devices. So that, third, that velocity byte, if you're doing a true note off message with the 8, the eight thing, you can put anything for velocity and it'll do it. Um, there are some synthesizers that you can say, hey, uh, listen to note off velocity, but you have to have some way of sending that data on your controller. So 
these controllers, although this controller does note off velocity, note off messages, there's no velocity, right? It doesn't sense you doesn't, doesn't sense how quickly you let it go, right? So note off velocity tends to be ignored. So that can usually be anything, zero to seven and a half, whatever you want. I misinterpreted at the same time. I did not understand that that you can just string them together, but technically they're not exactly the same. Well, that's it. So, I know, but the semantics, but you know, that's what. Yeah, and this this is the catch with 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 anything you do on a computer. There's things that seem like they're happening simultaneously, but they're not. Um, so you could play a chord, for example, and you would say, "I'm playing all three of those notes at the same time." But it, and it sounds like you are, but in reality, it played one, then the other, then the other. Um, it's just very close, close together. Um, okay, let's try text string that will play note C3 at full velocity for all MIDI channels. I just did this after I emailed you. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it took me a couple of emails with Tracy to get this one to work. But anybody, you got any guesses on this one? There's 16 of them. Yeah, there's 16. Yeah, I mean, so there is no shortcut for this. Oh, yeah, I okay? do a shortcut. There's no shortcut. Yeah. So it's it, you're going to need 16 messages yes. to do this. All back direct nine. Yep. Nine zero three C seven F. Nine one three C seven F. Nine two three C seven F. Dot dot dot. <laughs> nine F three C seven F. Right. So it's just a big long thing. And this seems completely cumbersome to us. We're thinking like, really? That's like, there's no shorter way to do this? But the computer loves this. It's totally fine with that. What if the computer actually hit it all? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I mean, it it computers on. love MIDI. They, they, they love MIDI over audio. It's so much easier. The original Macintosh computer that came out in 1984, it did MIDI. Like, it could sequence MIDI. This was long before we could edit audio. Because MIDI is like, it's easy, it's a piece of cake. It's, it's such little amounts of data. The computers are happy to do it for you. They're not so happy to stream you know, 48 channels of 96 kilohertz, 24-bit audio off of a hard drive all at the same time. They don't like that so much. But they'll play MIDI all day. OK, um, hex string that will set the volume for all MIDI channels at full volume. B0. Yeah, same sort of problem here. There's no shortcut. So, Zero seven. It's seven F. Yep. I wrote one twenty seven on mine. And then you know you do B one zero seven seven F on so on and so forth until you get all the way to B F zero seven seven F. All right. Did anybody make sense out of the MIDI machine control one? Didn't know what machine was. I tried. You find that that chapter in the book, MIDI machine control. Okay. So you want to guess? Tell me what you got. Let's see if it's right. Well, I mean, I'll talk you through it in here in a second. I was like, I just know the play bit. I don't have the rest of it. <laughs> so you got the play, which was it, which is zero two. Zero two, right? So that's the play byte. Okay, so let me show you. Oh, whoa, no, not that. Stop. Except for some reason I put in zeros and put in eights. Let's find a better one here. Well, but that's because my, my brain is working. Oh, there it was. I mean, it won't do anything. Okay. That's it. F07, F7, F06, 02, F7. Great. Okay. And let me show you why that is. <laughs> Okay. Um, I went to the library and scanned 
the pertinent pages. <laughs> so um, here is the MIDI machine control section. Okay, uh, and what you're looking for with these is if the code name here is syntax. What is the syntax of the message? So here is the command message syntax for MIDI machine control. So it's F07F, and then there's a byte, there's a variable byte for destination. And they define destination down here in a second. And then there's this byte called MCC, which is identifies a MIDI machine control message. And then there's some, some bytes for the command string, and then it ends with F7. So what we need to do is now plug in the rest of these. So destination, here's destination. It's a device ID, a device address, group address, or an all call address. The idea here is you could have um, multiple machines here that are doing transport controls. So machine, MIDI machine control is meant to be transport controls, like play, stop, rewind, record. So you have a stack of like tape decks or something that did this, or logic response to MIDI machine control. Okay, so the idea behind device addresses was that you could have each tape device or whatever would have a separate ID, and so you'd have ID number zero, ID number one, ID number two, and that's how you would know which one you're controlling. Um, and so there are, what they're saying is zero, zero, so seven E are your individual device IDs. And then um, there's groups, group addresses, and they're not very clear about this, actually. Uh, and maybe. Let's see. So, um, in reality, what's happening is and there's probably another page here that has this, is the group, there's a, a series of these that are group addresses that are uh, reserved, so you don't get all the way up to 7E for device addresses. There's some that are groups. The idea is you can put a bunch of them on a group, and then they would all respond, everybody that's in that group. Here's the thing. I usually don't worry about device IDs, because usually, these days we're, we're, we're have two things, your, your controller and your computer. <laughs> and the controller controls the computer, and all you ever really use these days is what's called the all call address. And if you put a 7F in your message for the device address, everything responds. Everything in that MIDI chain responds to 7F. It's like, play anything that's out there <laughs> will be 7F. So we put a 7F here for destination. Okay. Now, the MCC byte is defined here, and it, they're saying that's 0, 06. What if you have multiple, what if you have multiple devices? They each need a device ID. They each need their own. And, but they could each have their device ID, but they would still respond to 7F. Right, because that's all. Yeah. But what if, would I have to figure out its particular device ID? If you, if you had two machines, two computers, for example, yeah. and one, you know, the world's running logic, right? Mm -hmm and you want to play on the first one but not the second one, then you would do, for destination, you would do 0, 1, for if that was the device ID for the first computer. Do you set the device ID? Or you set it. Oh, OK. Yep. So you'd have to go to that computer and say, you are device ID 0, and you are device ID 1, and you are device ID 2. And then you would build your messages to send to that device. OK? Now, the MCC byte is here, and it's defined as 0, 06, and that's just a sub-ID for MIDI machine control commands. Uh, this is a subset, this whole thing is a subset of systems exclusive. Remember we talked about systems exclusive as this thing that would be manufacturer specific? Well, there are, every systems exclusive uh, message includes what they call a manufacturer ID. Okay, so you would do systems exclusive, which would be F0, and then the next byte would be the manufacturer ID number. And so there's a manufacturer ID for PV, and one for Roland, and one for Yamaha. Uh, but they reserve 7F. They reserve that one uh, for extensions to the MIDI protocol. So what you're saying here is, I'm doing a systems exclusive message with a manufacturer ID of 7F, which is you know, generic. 
which means that this is something else. And then anything that anything that is that is an extension of this protocol is always going to have one of these device IDs. So all of these things like um, MIDI show control, MIDI machine control, MIDI time code, all these kinds of things will have this destination thing. And then this guy is really just saying what sort of extension are we using? So there's a, that, that fourth byte is always is the byte that tells you are we doing MIDI machine control messages? Are we doing MIDI show control messages? Are we doing something else? Okay, And so the the format for that, for if you wanted a mini machine control, is 0, 6. Okay, so they're just telling you that. That's a, that's a static thing, if it's a mini sh machine control message. Okay? So, so far we have F0, 7F, 7F, 0, 6. And then all we have to fill in now is the command string. So what needs to go there? Well, if we flip over to the next page, here are the different commands. Okay, and what we want is play, right? And play is 0, 2 in hex. Okay, so I just go in and I put 0, 2. There's my play command. F0, 7F, 7F, 0, 6, 0, 2, F7. Everything will respond to that because it's using the all call device ID. So what is MIDI show? That's another thing. So but I want to make sure we get this before we move on to MIDI, MIDI show control. So there's other command strings. You know, there's uh, all kinds of other things you can do. You can do stop, rewind, pause, eject, reset. I mean, all kinds of different things. And notice that some of them include some data bytes. Uh, so like shuttle, they, there are some data bytes that go along with that. There's three extra bytes that go with that. And so you'd have to like go, there's probably a page later where they break out that particular command and tell you what the other data bytes are that go with it. Um, but the play command has no data bytes associated with it. So play is just one byte, hex, zero, two, and you're done. What's MC? <coughs> What's that? MCS, what is that? Machine control. I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually not sure what that means. We can see. MCS. I don't see it in here anywhere. It might be in the books. I mean, I just scanned the couple of pages that we needed to answer this particular question, but um, but it's probably defined somewhere in there. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just trying to understand what the difference is like a machine control and then like a show control. The difference is that number, that oh. zero 06. <laughs> Other than the number, what is it? What you do with it. Machine control specifically controls transport controls. So this was back in the days of tape players. And I had a big reel to reel tape player. And I wanted to be able to remote control the play and record and stop and all that commands. That's what that was for. Mm -hmm. So it's like physically controlling the machine? Yeah. Whereas the show control is? Show control is like a much bigger thing, as you'll see. So show control is all about, well, maybe I want to make a light board do something or a projector do something. Machine control is all about transport controls for audio devices. Play, stop, rewind, record, pause, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that came first, and then later MIDI show control came up, and there was a guy by the name of Charlie Richmond who really spearheaded this, um, and he's still around, and it's a fascinating guy to talk to. Um, so here's the MIDI machine or MIDI show control um, section of the book, and here's your syntax. So we have that same F07F. Device ID, he's calling it device ID it's, as opposed to destination, but it's the same thing. And then you have this byte called MSC, which is, that's the, the byte for MIDI show control. There's a, so it's a special ID for that. And then you're going to have a byte for this thing called command format, a byte for the actual command, and then any data bytes that go along with that, and then you close it with F7. 
So, uh, let's start with device ID. So that's the next section here, device identification. Uh, oops. So device IDs are the same thing as MIDI machine control. So you know you could have individual IDs, and then there's the all call. So if you if you don't know what the ID is of the thing you're trying to control, just use seven F, and it should respond. Um, it'll just save you some time. So troubleshoot real quick, um, and then later you can figure out what the actual ID is. But it's just it's whatever the device ID is of the thing you're trying to control. Okay, so. Uh, So I'm going to do 7F for now because I know that that will work. Now, the MSC is this special byte. Oh, it's right here. So it says, in this document, all transmitted characters are represented in hex unless otherwise noted. The initials MSC will be used to denote the new MIDI show control sub ID, which is 02 in hex. So MSC is 02. 0, 06 would be MIDI machine control. Okay. So I will be the first to admit that these are not easy documents to wrap your head around. I mean, the formatting is horrible, and everything's like out of order, and it's like stream of consciousness. Oh, I need to tell them about this. And <laughs> but that's part of the reason why I wanted to actually go and read the real book because you need to see how this stuff is published. It's it's. You can't control how the information is given to you. All right, so our next thing is command format. So let's find that out. And that's the next page here. So here are the different command formats. So what, what they're calling command format is essentially the type of device you're wanting to control. OK? So if it's a light board, it's probably going to respond to 0, 1 as a command format. If it's a sound piece, piece of sound equipment, it's going to respond to 1, 0, or 16 as its ID. If it's you know a projector, it's probably going to respond to four zero, so on and so forth. Seven uh, F is an all type. So what was the thing I wanted you to do? In the what question? What, in the question? Uh, projection. projection. Okay, so it's going to be four zero, right? Projection. So command format be 4, 0. QLab, for example, will respond to the sound command format. So it'll respond to the 1, 0. All right, now we need the actual command. And what was the command I was looking for? I want to, oh, go. So I want to make it go. What was the end? OK, so let's go find our different commands. So here's our command formats. And next page would be, here's general commands. So here's just some simple ones. Uh, yeah, there's go, zero, 01. So zero, 01 is go. And it says that the number of data bytes that come with a go command are variable. So it says, well, you know, I don't know, it could be. Could be a few, could be a lot, it depends. So let's, because that, that's the next thing. If we scroll back up, we see that we're supposed to add some data bytes to this thing. Right? So we've got the actual command, 0, 1 for go, but there's some data bytes that go with it. So, and according to that sheet, th that's variable. So I don't know how many we actually need. So here it is. If we go to the next page, detailed command and data descriptions. Here's go. So go would be 0, 1. And then you could put a Q number here if you wanted to. So if there's a specific Q that you wanted to send, send a go control. So if you had a whole list of Qs on this device, and they all have a number. And you could specifically say go on Q number 10. So you could put that number on there if you want it. Uh, but it's optional. So you don't have to put a Q number. So I'm going to say, I didn't specify a Q number in the request, so I'm going to say we'll leave that out. But it has this byte that's called a delimiter. And that's just used to split up the number, list, and path values. So if I'm not going to put the Q number, I just need to skip straight to that delimiter. So 0, 0, 
And then the next thing would be the list. So if you, you could have more than one Q list, for example, in QLab, you could have more than one list. So you could do Q number 10 in list number one. But again, that's optional, so I'm going to leave that out. So the next byte would be the, the next delimiter, which would be another 0, 0. And then I'm going to do path. And path would be, um, you know, so you could have paths contain lists and lists contain queues. All right, that's just how they set it up. Yeah, but what's a path in, in QLab? It's not. There's no path in QLab. So then we just don't put anything. No. Okay. And we just finish it with the seven. Apps. I suppose path might be workspace, maybe. So like our different desktops. Yeah. Yeah, two different workspaces. You might be able to. One of them would be, but I don't know if that if it would respond to that. <coughs> I would have to ask, ask them. Interesting. Okay. Um, so path is optional, so I'll leave that alone. So I don't need that either. And then we close it with. It's actually F7. F7. I'll just scroll back up here and you can see it. There we go. So the whole message is F07F, 7F, 02, 40, 01, 00, 00, F7. So if I want to trigger go from any thing, I need a code that, that does something like this along these lines. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay, so why does it start with F0? Because F0 is the status byte for systems exclusive. Okay. Right? So that was where they dumped all the extra stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> that didn't have to do with music performance. Does the DGPIO do, do something like that? Yeah. So, but, I don't, but I don't have to tell it to do all those things. It kind of does it. It'll build the string for you. So you, you say a MIDI show control message, and it'll give you, you know, it'll ask you what's the device ID. What is the command format? Like it'll ask you for command format. You have to know it. It's, it's not going to give you a list for like sound or video or whatever. You have to just give it a number for the command format. And then is it like is that list like the list? Yeah. Oh. But it's not. It doesn't have that list in QStation. Okay. You have to know the command format. So you have to look it up in this book <laughs> to know it. Okay. <laughs> but you said F zero was system exclusive. Yep. F zero. Yep. F zero systems exclusive. Okay, then what's the 02? The 02 is the, the, the sub ID for MIDI show control. So that is the part that tells us that this is a MIDI show control message. So when you select MS MIDI show control on like QLab, mm -hmm. it does that basically mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, so QLab has it in a list. I'll show you. Um, and we're going to, we'll get to QLab. Here in a little bit, in a couple weeks, but, um, but yeah, if you want to make, uh, so you'd have to bring in a MIDI queue here, and the type of message is MIDI show control message, and here's your command format, and it has it in a list. So, which one do you want? So, in our case, we would do the projection, the command, here's all the different commands. You want go. Here's the device ID. Which device ID do you want? I'll just type 127 because that's the all call. So that because they want it in decimal here, not hex. How do you, how do you know that? Because try to type 7F and see what happens. <laughs> so it, so so they go ahead and just put all the, the hex in the words, so you don't actually even know what numbers. Right. So you can put Q number um, would be Q number one. And then they won't let you do list or path, it looks like. So all they're going to give you is the actual queue. But yeah, then if you send that, it'll it'll go out as in hex. Can you see this uh, system polarization changing with technology, or is this worth really trying to memorize? Well, yeah, I mean, for... For the purposes of MIDI show control, that's not changing. So, you know, the, the any device that wants to be MIDI show control compatible is going to have to conform its stuff into that those constraints. Um, they may not call it that. You know, for example, QLab doesn't really call its workspaces paths, but the workspace is essentially the path. Um, and if you look at the preferences here. They'll tell you, if you go to MIDI controls, they'll see, so QLab, if you turn on MIDI show control, it says when, 
when enabled, QLab will respond to these commands. It will respond to go, stop, resume, load, all off, standby, increment, decrement, sequence, increment, decrement, and reset commands. It doesn't tell you what those do. <laughs> you have to infer some of that. Um, and it says, here's where you would set the device ID for this particular workspace. But it says 127 is always going to be monitored. It'll always respond to that. What it doesn't tell you here is what command format the QLab responds to. But yeah, I can tell you it's the command format for sound. <laughs> because this is a sound device. I believe it will also respond to projection because you can do video on this too. But if you, if you have the video plugin for it. Uh, so. What is, can you click back to the page? Yep. Okay, so what's the difference between 02 and 40? So 02 is, the, it denotes this is a MIDI show control message. Command format is, this is what type of MIDI show control device are you trying to control? Is this a lighting board? Is this okay. a sound board? So is the first this... one is for the message and the second one is for the actual message. Yep, yep. It's like everything gets more specific as you go yep. down the line. Yep. Right. Exactly. Each byte is a, is a lower level of specific, specificity. 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, there's a and I don't know if I've got this page in here. Let me see. It scrolls slow, so when we're back on the. No, it's not in there. So if. Uh, I'd have to pull this up. Um, so Charlie actually got, because Charlie wrote the MIDI show control spec, and uh, he got permission from the MIDI manufacturers organization to actually publish the MIDI show control portion as a PDF on his website. <laughs> so um, if you, I believe it's under show control resources. So hey, Richmond Sound Design is the name of his company. And here's the MIDI show control spec in PDF format. Um, I just want to show you how queues work. Queue numbers, anyway. So this is the same thing. It's the same stuff, but um, I did not have the section on queue numbers. It's an always type like this. Type like what? Just this information is just so boring and hard to read. Well, it's yeah. So here you know, queue numbers. So here's how you do a queue number. So he's saying there's numbers, there's lists, there's paths, right? Um, now, here is the way you do numbers. Because remember, you can't do anything more than 127 in a data byte in MIDI. You can't do it. Well, you could have Q128. So, how are you going to do that? And this is why these 00, zero delimiters are required. This is the only way he knows that you're starting a new number. Because the numbers are, are what we call, they're, they're nibbleized. Uh, into these smaller values. So if you wanted to do, uh, you know, Q number 25, just for example, okay, you would enter that. That would take you two data bytes to do it. It would be three two, and then three five. So the three is just it's a throwaway, but you have to have it there. Uh, Why? But it was three then. I have three, three then. So if I want to make, if I want to specify that in hex, the Q number twenty-five, I have to split that up <coughs> into two data bytes, and the the data byte for a Q number uh, placeholder always starts with a three, and then the number you care about after that. So here he's got another one here. So if you want to do Q number 235.6, it's 32, 33, 35. And then 2E is the decimal point, and then 36. So 235.6. This is why they say that the number of data bytes that go with the Go message is variable. <laughs> Because it depends on this notion of Q numbers. And then this 0, 0 is the delimiter that says, OK, Q number is over. Now we're going to go into list number. 
and he's saying the list is 36.6. So 36.6. Right? And then we hit another delimiter, saying, okay, list number is over. Now we're doing path number, and the path number is 59. So 5, 9. And then we close the whole message with an F7, and it's done. So this is how he's choosing to break that 127 barrier. I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just oh, saying I, that's what it does. I agree. Well, so, um, <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> It, it, I think what it is, is if you look at the actual ASCII code table, that for the numbers 0 through 9, that's what, what it is. That's the actual code, ASCII code is 30 through 39 in hex. So that's how he's doing it. And he's using the ASCII decimal point character, which is 2E. So if you look up ASCII code, you'll see that. I don't understand the point at which, like, a number, it's like a three can have 14 different meanings in this, in this whole thing. And, exactly. Like, where, it depends on what sort of message you're building. Yeah, and, like, how do you know when, I don't know. I just feel like trying to try like, to. How do you identify as you look at it? Not how do I identify as I look at it. If I'm trying to write something, it's like, how do I know when to use a three here and it means one thing and when I'm actually trying to get to mean this other thing? Um... Just, you know because of the type of message you're using. It's like a list of exceptions, and everything's an exception. You have to just memorize them all. Well, you don't have to memorize them all. Ultimately, you're going to teach a computer to memorize it for you. right? That's what this stuff is written for. It's written for you to wrap your head around it once so that you can teach it to a computer. And then the computer does it all for you after that. So you only have to make sense out of it one time. <laughs> And then you program it once, and then it, you know, forget about it. Okay. Uh, just for my own curiosity, that number uh, after the double zero, uh -huh. uh, is that a 6.59? Is that the same number? Um, well, so they're doing 235.6. Right. So 2, 3, 5, and then point. Six. Right now, new, new number. Or new number. The zero zero is a new number now. Now we're talking about list. That's thirty six point six. Oh, I didn't see the zero zero. Yep. Yeah. And then a zero zero is a new number. Now fifty nine, and then we're done. <laughs> yeah. So let's look this up here. So here's the ASCII characters. Yep, so for 0 through 9 in hexadecimal, so here's the binary version. for. So ASCII is the, when you actually type keys on your keyboard, it sends a binary number to your computer that tells you what key you pressed. So when you push the button 1 on your keyboard, it sends a binary number, 0011001. Which, which in hex is 31. Uh, so that's where, he, that's where he's, he didn't just like, make this up, right? He just said, well, hey, that's a really easy way to do this. We're just encode them as ASCII. Um, and as long as we don't, as long as we're only doing 0 through 9, we'll never break, you know, that status byte problem. What is, AS, is ASCII? ASCII. Who is, what is that? That's ASCII. That, that, is, that is the protocol for letters and numbers and characters that you type on a keyboard in the computer. This is a language that one of this is one of the first languages your computer learned was, yep. you know. And oh look, here's the, here's the decimal period, the period, and it's two e. All right, so that, that's all he's saying is you're going to encode the Q numbers in ASCII. Okay. And it turns out that that doesn't actually that that doing it in ASCII will never break. It, that that ended up that was an accident, right? <laughs> that wasn't on purpose. It just so happened he realized, oh hey, I could do it in ASCII, and it wouldn't actually ever be more than one twenty seven. Um, so 
So are we going to build something that can go somewhere? Do you have that can be a thing? Yeah. <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> yeah, we're going to build some of these. Um, the reason I'm teaching it to you at this low of a level is that you can't, you, you have no control over the level of abstraction that you're allowed to work in. Okay, whatever tool you have in front of you is going to abstract it to some extent. And that may be complete abstraction where you're typing it in English and it translates it for you, or it might be half abstraction like what QStation does, where it gives you some of it, and, but it asks you for a command format, and it just asks you. You just have to give it a number, and you have to know what that number means. Right. Right. So that's why I'm telling you will probably never be in the scenario where you are typing the entire message in hex, but you will absolutely be in a scenario where you have to do some of it in hex because that, that's just how they're going to present it to you. Yes. Okay. So back to the homework. What seems to me number one? We did it. Well, okay, so like, since we're not doing the queue list queue number or path number, does it just end with the zero one? Or do yeah, you just do zero one, then zero zero, zero zero, okay. F seven. Yep, you have to have and the delimiters. Because that is end of systems exclusive message. Okay, and that's standard. Yep, all yep. Every system, everything that starts with F zero has to end with F seven. Okay. Always and forever <clears throat> for the rest of your life in the universe. I just need some stability. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason they did that is because systems exclusive is this wide open field for MIDI. It's like there are all kinds of things that could happen in systems exclusive, and your device may have no idea what that you could send a you could send a, a MIDI show control message into that Akai keyboard, and it's gonna it knows nothing about it. It's zero two four zero. No, it's zero two zero four. And then zero two four zero. What is the command format? Here it is. ID yes. for projection device. Four zero. For, for projection, it's four zero. Okay. So okay. zero two four zero, and then go would be zero one F seven. Great. Okay. With the zero zeros for the forms. Yeah. So these system exclusive messages could be dumped all around on your MIDI patch control <coughs> network, and some devices may not recognize them. It's so like this keyboard would not know what to do if it got a MIDI show control go message. But it's going to see that F0. And it's going to say, oh, this is a system exclusive message. And, and it's going to start trying to read it. So it'll start reading those bytes. And eventually, it's not going to follow any format that it knows. It's going to run into those threes. And it's going to go, ah. So what does it do? It just waits until it gets the F7. It just says, all right, I clearly do not know how to decipher this thing, so I'm just going to like let all this data fly by until I see the F7, and I know it's over. <laughs> it's just like hiding. It is. That's exactly what it does. It's just like it, it'll try to decipher it up until a point until it sees a byte it doesn't understand. And I tell you, the, the, the first byte it's not going to understand is that 0, 2. Because that's, that's the byte for MIDI show control. It's going to go, ah, oh, ah. I've never been told what to do when I see a zero two in that position. So exactly, I'm just going to duck and let this thing fly over my head. And when I see the F seven, I'll start listening again. So are you saying it's bad for? Is that a bad thing to to say seven F to to send to all your devices or whatever? Is that? A, is that yeah, I mean, if you've got a lot of data, I mean, also if let's if you're building a whole show around this and you've got lots of devices that want to respond, that that all call device ID is not going to cut it. Because everything is going to go all at the same time, and you don't necessarily want that. But if you have different devices that, then you know that one won't understand the zero two, and another one will. Like you have one of each. Well, it, well, and yeah. So here's the, if it's if it's a show, and you're doing show control, then really you could use the 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 all call. You could use seven f, right? And then uh, the zero two, but the command formats would be different. So if you have one light board one sound device, one projection device, and everything, then ultimately, you know, the light board will ignore the stuff for the sound and projection and so on and so forth. But if you've got more than one light board, for example, like we've done that before. We did Sunday in the Park with George, and we had, like, two light boards and three media servers. And we were trying to sync all of that to the, to the sound cube. And so we had to get specific about device IDs. 
because that was the only byte that was going to be unique for all those different devices. So it just depends on the scenario. But they're giving you the ability to be that granular just in case you need it. But I always start with just the all call because that's the easiest one and everything responds to that. Gotcha. Then I, that's, I just have to remember that one number. 7F makes anything go. <laughs> and then if, you know, and then if too many things happen, then I have to start like looking up in the book. Okay, uh, okay, the next thing, oh, I've got to get to the device ID, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there you go. Um, well, I'm going to give you guys a test on this, and part of that test will be downloading that PDF. Part of the test is to go somewhere and download this? Well, no, I will have a link for it in the test, and you will get that. So you will get it eventually. <laughs> part of the test is to download something? Okay. Well, it's not to download, it's to read it, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to give, give you guys a Blackboard test that asks you these kind of questions, and I'm ultimately going to ask you to build a couple more of these kind of messages. But yeah, I mean, I can send you that now. I'm just saying you're going to send and get it again later. Or you could go over to the library and you could copy the pages here. Because I only have like two pages. I don't have the whole thing in there. I just copied the two pages you needed to answer these specific questions on this particular worksheet. But you know, that's not to say that that's the same ones you're going to need for the test. So can I, can I, do we have those for this worksheet? Sure. So, can I just put a spiral down? <laughs> just go to the library, yes, and, and there's that copy machines there, and you can just copy the pages that you're interested in. I don't even know where the Take a picture of it with I'm your phone. Too. I, don't, I don't know where it is. That big building with no books, I know that. Oh, you got the old one? Yeah, the old one. Is right. So it's on our So, look, if you don't want to pay for the copies, just open the book, take a picture of the pages. Come on. Sure. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are about to, we're about to move into a library that's three times the size we have. If we don't know how to use the one we have already, what are we going to do when they actually move the books over there? Well, I think we know how to use it. I just think it's very far away. <laughs> <laughs> it's behind the pickle. It's right behind the pickle jar, for crying out loud. You I walk know. there every day. Oh, my gosh. I think everybody, like, rips on the library, and it, like, hurts me in a very personal way. <laughs> I really like the library. It's I love useful. Library. People shit on it. I love libraries. It's a joke. All right. But then the library don't have an elevator. Yes, it does. Exactly. The new one? They do? The, yeah. the old one? The old one has one. It's the old one has it, one. The new one doesn't. It beeps all the time. Yeah. The, so it's in the back. It's like a freight thing. You have to like you have to ask them for it, and they'll tell you how to get up there. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So now uh, in our last... 20 minutes, I'm going to show you how to map MIDI controls in Logic, okay? okay you ready? No. Yes. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I want to do that. Okay, so here's Logic. Um, this is really easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just kind of show you. So I have... Um, I have MIDI monitor loaded up here, and there are the on this keyboard. There's like sliders and knobs and buttons and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what they do. I don't really care, but they do something, and I can prove that if I just like move them. Look, stuff's happening. Now you know you could do this the hard way, and you could like write down all these messages and go and manually program them in. You could, but it's far easier than that. You, you, it really doesn't matter. All you gotta do is go in and say, what do you want to control? So pick something here that you see you want to control. Pan. The pan? Okay. The pan for this channel. Yes. All right. I'm gonna hit Command L for learn. And then I click the thing I want to control, the pan knob. And then I'm gonna pick a knob over here in my thing and I'm gonna turn it back and forth. And it learns. And it says, okay, there you go. Okay, Done. All you did was hit Command L. Yeah, and then clicked the thing I wanted to, wanted to apply it to. And now, so I could click no. So now if I want to do the fader, I'll click the fader. So I'm going to learn the fader, and now I'm going to move this fader up and down. Great. Done.
Fader Pan. <laughs> Wait for Command L in. In the keyboard. So just it's Command L. It puts it into learn mode. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Right. So now, now it's saying, all right, I'm ready to learn stuff. Right. So I'm going to say, all right, I want to control that bus send. So I just click that bus send knob, and then I start turning a knob, and it'll say, oh, okay, great, I got it. Done. Okay, how do you sign that bus? To do what? Say again. Uh, you, you assign that. I saw how you assign the bus to yeah. that knob. Yeah. Now, what is that bus controlling? Um, it's going out to like a reverb or something, I think. Yeah, but can you do something other than reverb? Can you, can you put oh, it's it's just a plug-in. So here's the bus. So here's bus three here. Right. So I could, you know, it's got a space designer reverb on it, but I could put something else. Yeah, but I didn't. I don't see anything that's non-musical in those, uh, in those bus choices. What do you mean? Uh, you got dynamics, you know, EQ, delay, right, pitch, or whatever. But you don't have anything like. Uh, Panning, or, or you don't have uh, functional things. Oh, sure you do. So, uh, so here's the, here's the each the channel EQ for this channel, right? Right. So this this particular channel I'm working on right now, I'm going to open up this EQ, or no, that's this that's the sampler. So here's the EQ. So you're saying you want to remote control the parameters inside of here? Yeah. No problem. So. Especially like a so, so uh, I'll, I'm going to set up my low pass filter, turn it on. I'm going to say, I want to learn, so I'm going to command L, and I'm going to click the frequency. Okay, and now I'll just pick this little slider over here, learn that, and then I'll hit command L again to exit the learn mode. Okay, and so yeah, now I can actually... Wait, 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 can you learn two things at once? Yeah, so once I go into learn mode, I can just click, I just click on something, move the thing, it learns it, and then I can click on another thing, move the control. It learns. It. I can keep going until I hit Command L again, and it just like takes us out of there. So yeah, now I can control the the plugin. I need this desperately. Yeah. So you can do any parameter in Logic. This will work for. So you could even go into the synth, for example. So here's the um, uh, the the sampler, and maybe you want to control the release time. Uh, so I just Command L, click on the release thing, move a slider, boom. Now I can sit here and, and manipulate that. That's all there is to it. It's Command L, it's click and Command L again. Yeah. Now, now what you do, if you want to go see what it's all done, you go to Logic Pro here and go to Control Services and set and select Controller Assignments. Because it's got a database of all these things it's learned now, so you can go delete them if you don't like them. Logic Pro X, Control Services, Control Assignments. So you click on that and you get this whole list. So here's all the things it's learned so far. So the first one it learned was Pan. So it's, uh, it's on a channel strip for the selected track, pan. So what it learned was whatever track I have selected, it will pan with that knob. Okay. If you want to do a specific one, you have to do the index. You index one, it'll always be channel one, regardless of what you have selected. So you can actually use the same learned parameter on two different tracks sure. for two different Controls. Yeah, you just have to select on it. One and, re and release on another, or, or increase tape uh, delay. Sure. Jeez. Yeah, so I could do that. So um, maybe what I want. So what this one that I had was pan on, the, and this is pan for selected channel, right? Mm -hmm. So it works for whatever channel I have selected. I select a different one, and it works. Okay. But yeah, I could say I want it pan for selected channel and. Um, I also want it to control the EQ for my high pass filter. So I could go learn again. I'll say that and I'll move that. And then I'm done. And so now I should do both. Oh, did I do the wrong one? Maybe it, maybe it overrode it. Let's go. We'll go fix that. Oh, yeah. So it changes. So what I'm going to do is. Um,
I'll learn it again. I'll learn the pan again. So right now it's doing that. And I'm going to learn pan as well. Okay, and that. Uh, now you used to be able to do this. That's okay. I, I would. I would only do that in a live situation. I wouldn't do that at home. I mean, you may just have to ma manually enter it here. So you'd have to go in and say, "This will be my uh, pan." Um, so it'll be channel strip selected track parameter pan. Mm. Oh, actually, the way to do it, I know what to do. So what I'll do is I'll learn pan some some other way. Um, so I'll just like say it's this one. And now I can go in and I'll just like set it to the same thing. So here's the two different value chains. So here's this is the MIDI, right? B0, Z, 0, 8, and then low 7, that's like a variable depending on what the, that data byte is for. Okay. So if I want these to be the same, um, I'm just going to take this, copy that, and paste it in here. There, now they should both do it. Yeah. So I'm panning and controlling the EQ at the same time, the same note. That is cool. Yeah. You can do buttons too. Let's see, so like here's a here's a button, right? So if I want this to be my uh, mute button for, or maybe it's bypass for the bus. That's a good one. So so if I want to just bypass the reverb send for a second, so I'll hit learn, click that, and then. Oh look, it's doing the same message as the pan, that particular button. So that button is actually just toggling the pan between values. So I, I need to pick a different button. <laughs> Learn. That doesn't want to do that one. Maybe I maybe, well what I could what I could do is make it be the mute for that bus. So I could say do the mute. There we go. And that would mute the reverb, right? Okay. Okay, now what I'd like to do is all those parameter changes, I want you to start ones on different measures and end them on different measures. Like on that same first track you got, mm -hmm. let's have at measure five pan at a uh, Zero, 0, or total left, or whatever. And then I measure 12, have pan, total right. Well, that's just an automation thing. So uh, yeah. so you it's could, you hit A, you go into automation right. mode, and you could either go in and just draw that in. So you could go to pan, and then you could draw in the pan up and down. Oh, okay, so that'd be easy. Yeah, that'd be a lot Right, easier. or you could actually put it into what they call write mode. I actually prefer touch mode, because write overwrites everything that's already there, but touch just updates it. So I go to touch mode, and I just, play yeah, and as I'm going through it's recording what I'm doing as automation yeah so then I play for a few measures and then take it back up right when I hit a on a channel uh -huh. this this comes up and then you can you can just change that by right going in. yeah 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 exactly uh, this, how'd you get uh, down here to this one? Um, I just opened up the, this little, you know, where, so where it said volume, I just clicked on that and oh, it'll okay. give me all the automatable parameters for that whole channel, like all the plugins, all the everything. Mm -hmm. So whatever you want. So I just said, well, give me the, the send for the, and it'll do it. Okay. That's it. It's not any more complicated than that. Um, the, if you, you can get like dedicated controllers, like we have these like Behringer fader banks or something. Um,
Um, and those have presets for them. I'll show you how those work. Um, so what, what's interesting about these is they actually have a preset on them that um, will make them talk to this. There's a, you know, it's already been programmed. Really? So um, let's see if I can get it to reach. No, these aren't at all. These are, like, I don't know. 150 bucks or something, so when, I think. When you program, is it saving the information to, like, it's, it's not rewriting the, the MIDI bytes. It's re, it's no, it's it's about. telling logic how to respond to what's coming in. Ah, uh, OK. OK. And that's a, that is a global thing. So that's now henceforth and forever for every project you ever do in logic. For that, OK. For, for that, that computer. Now, for that computer, but right? If I plug in a new MIDI device, it doesn't know which, which thing it is. I now have to relearn it. Well, it depends on, yeah, so if you go into the controller assignments, uh, if you want it to be any MIDI device, then you just have to change this MIDI input, because it's going to learn it based on whatever the device was that doing, that's doing it. But if you just say, look, I got a whole bunch of these keyboards, and maybe they're going to show up as different things. Are there libraries? Let's say you have a, a, like, a, like a home and a show equipment or something, you know what I mean? And so you wanted to program something at home, and then you had that same thing somewhere else, but you had different equipment. Are there like different libraries of oh, yeah. lists with different devices? You see what I'm saying? I, I um, what you're saying. You can't do it in sound because every uh, manufacturer interprets a volume level different, like 60 on the Kai's. And I mean, I think you can export the current settings and import them back in to another computer. Right. Actually, right. Like for the controller. Because, like, you, you know, you had that Akai there. Well, let's say I go somewhere else and yeah. I go home and I have the, the 24 version. Of the 48 or something. Right, so that's what I'm saying is ultimately, I mean, so there are presets on this thing that define what all these do. So if I flipped over to a different preset, these sliders will now be doing different MIDI messages, right? So it, as long as you have the same preset loaded up on here, and that, that, and that preset is the same as the one you have at home, then it should work. Um, and what you can do is you could take a systems exclusive dump, MIDI dump off of this thing, and then take it home and then dump it into yours and all the same presets would be there. But I'm just using the, one of the factory presets that came with this thing. Gotcha. I'm just okay. using, it's the reason preset. Okay. okay. But, here's the, but here's what I'm saying is if you went in to each of these things and said, actually, I want this to respond to any MIDI input. So regardless of what controller I'm using, I always want controller number three to control the, you know, the send value for this. Like, I always want that to be regardless of what thing I've done. And you chose three because it was not assigned, right? No, that's just what it was. Oh. I just moved the fader, and that's what it was. Um, so this guy, let me, let me show you how this thing works. Um, if you've got one of these sort of pre-baked controllers, um, actually, I need to... mode is it in? Oh, I gotta look that up now. Hang on, there's a, you, you can boot it up into different modes. BCF 2000 like a keyboard shortcut that when you boot it up you could then select which thing it does I think it might be in here I don't know let me just look it up here um, BCF 2000 um, mode. Oh yeah, emulation modes. Here we go. So this thing will emulate lots of popular uh, controllers. So um, yeah. So here, all that it'll it'll emulate a Mackie control. It'll emulate emulate a you know Hui device. Ah um, oh, right. So. 
we if we want it to do um, Mackey control or I could I, I could just do the logic control which is the third button over so I'm going to hold this button down turn it on and it goes into LC which is logic control mode and that logic used to make a controller that was specifically theirs okay so that that's what it is so if I go in now to my um, control services and go to, to setup I can say uh, new and say scan all models and it should find it uh, let's see so eMagic logic control that's what it is so I'm gonna hit add so it's in there now, and I just need to tell it what input input to use. So let's see if it works now. No. I wonder if this thing's even showing up yet. Oh, it's not on there yet. Hold on. Ah, there we go, BCF port one. Excellent. So now we should be able to do it. So I'm going to have to delete this one. Delete. Oh, see, it found it automatically now. So there it is, port one, port one, logic control. All right, so now it's a thing. All right, and these are pans, and these are channel selects, these are mutes. And there's like a bank switch where you can, um, let's play, stop. So it'll do it in banks of eight. Like if you had more tra tracks, you could like flip the button. It'll flip the, the faders over now to be the next eight. And you can do those. Okay, so that's just a preset. Like that's pre-built into the thing. Okay, you don't even have to learn anything. Um, but there's only a few that do that. Uh, so something like this, this Akai, it doesn't do that. You have, you have to go in and map everything. Yeah, they make good stuff. Uh, so, there you go. You could have used logic programming for something like uh, Sound Dance with the Max Patch, where it panned in a circular motion. Like, in, instead, mm -hmm. of, instead of saying left to right, it was like a full 180 and around, but like, or 360, like the whole way, and it kept going. The logic doesn't allow for that, because it's just it's a left right pan. It's not that. No, it does a it does a surround pan. It does. Yeah, but really, I mean, you would have you could have done that in the Maximus P patch. You could have made a uh, it, 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 there's a there's what they call a node a nodal control device where you could actually put the last it's like a space map kind of thing where you can put the live last speakers in there and you could have automated that. Well, it, 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 they all did by default. They just kept going in their pans, and every right. so and, and, and so every so often they would. And so what I had control over was the speed at which they panned. Right. Um, and sometimes the pans would reverse and go the opposite way. But the problem that I noticed too was like there was a latency. Mm -hmm. like, like so I would put it up and you know it would be like beep beep and then it would go. Right. Like they would go. So it was, it was probably time. based on the way that they were doing that programming. They had to wait for it to go through a cycle before it would read the, the thing again. It was just it was just the way it was programmed. Would, uh, would it also work, what he's talking about is you set a cycle for pan and double that cycle for volume, then when it gets to the center, it'll be, the volume will be halfway up. Mm -hmm. When it gets to the right side, it'll be all the way up. When sure. it's upside, it'll halfway up. When it gets, so it'll be... Sure. Yeah. You can do anything that you can teach the computer to do. Right. This stuff is so much fun. Yeah. All right, so that's all our time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, no, that's just for your practice. Oh, okay. So, you don't want to email? No, hang on to him because okay. it's just you'll use that to study for that little test. I'm going to give you that. Okay. All righty. Cool. That's it for today, guys. Is that a Kai pretty expensive? I don't think so. I'd rather have a keyboard than just, I don't know why it's very interesting. No. Yeah, it, it, and that and we bought these because they were, they were cheap and they were programmable, 
right? And like some of the other ones weren't programmable. Like they did what they did, you couldn't change it. So these have a mode where you can actually say, I want this fader to do this specific MIDI command. Um, and most of the other motorized services don't do that. It's like it does what it does and you can't change it. And I hate that. <laughs> I always want to hack it and they wouldn't let me. Uh, she has. But they make them. They size. size. They make them 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 but what's cool is they have yeah, they, 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 they need so one. Really cool. but, uh, but is there a control on this? I want to move this knock with the most of the time that's what we're going to do. Oh, I need you have to change that in the sim. Yeah, yeah, you would do it. Um, you would do that because it's ultimately it is the controller that's interpreting this range, right? So this is a range of you know zero to sixteen thousand five hundred five. It's the synth that decides what to do with that. Um, so, yeah, you, you, there's a setting in all the synths. So you can say this is the range. It was an old dude, and he told me about the controller. Yeah, so that, and that was when they standardized the, the pitch bend, but now with all these plugins, I mean, everything's, they all do it differently. But what you can do is if you've got your own controller, like, I don't know how many things here, but like an old PV, PC 1600, we got a ton of those. Great. You could actually yeah, custom I know. program those things. I know, I completely. Maria texted me about the. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That seems to be the most popular.